All the characters in the story are over 18 years old. Working from home has its advantages. I don't have to commute to and from the office, and I can come whenever I want. Sounds perfect, doesn't it? Well, without trying to pretend that I'm gloating, it is. My name is Eugene. I work as a software specialist at a large computer company, which means that I take new programs and try to find any flaws or weaknesses in them before they are put into operation. The company provided me with a powerful computer, and as long as I logged in for eight hours every day, I was delighted. Of course, I had to show the results in a timely manner, but it was not difficult to meet their deadlines. Another advantage for such a young, even young age, was the salary. This allowed me to rent a small and cozy private house with two bedrooms and an excellent janitor with a barbecue and a gazebo. It was about 2 p.m. when a phone call interrupted my daydreams, something I seemed to do often when I was trying to fix a glitch in the program. Looking at the smartphone screen, I saw that it was my father. Hello. Hi. Do you have a minute to talk? Of course, Dad. What's the matter? I asked. We have a drunk man here who crashed into a tree near a house on a cargo truck in the Urals. Are you and mom okay? The driver is alive? Yes, we are fine, and this man is also alive, but this tree demolished part of our bedroom and kitchen. It really angered your mom and scared her a lot, he replied. What can I do? I asked. I was hoping that if it wasn't too difficult, she could come and stay with you for a while, he asked hesitantly before adding, the renovation won't take more than two weeks. We talked for a few more minutes. My father is not very talkative. When I asked if he wanted to come too, he said he was going to look after the renovation of the house. Plus, it was harvest time. He couldn't leave in any way. Before I finished the conversation, he let me know that mom would arrive tomorrow by long-distance taxi. I found myself looking forward to meeting her. Being only three hours away and knowing how early they get up in the morning, I decided that my mother would arrive here around noon tomorrow. My mom is kind of obsessed with cleanliness, so I took the time to get myself cleaned up. The house has two bedrooms, which are separated by a single bathroom, a spacious kitchen dining room, and a cozy living room, which makes up the rest of the house. I converted one of the bedrooms into my office with a comfortable sofa and a mini fridge. Sometimes I have trouble sleeping, so I came to the office and worked late. Instead of going to the master bedroom, I often just collapsed on the couch when I was tired enough. I made sure to put clean linen on the big bed in the room where she would sleep, and a pillow and a blanket in the office. Trying to get back to work proved difficult. My mind kept going back to the past to fondly remember that big tree. In my early teens, I became obsessed with climbing to the top of it. I vowed to defeat him at all costs, and after many failed attempts, I finally did it. Since that time, I have spent countless hours in that tree, admiring the magnificent view that opened from our place. I sat at my desk, and let these faded memories fill my mind until they became as clear as they were then. For some reason, my mind imagined my mother. She is a petite woman, weighing about 70 kilograms. The rest of the day went smoothly. By the time I finished working, I was way ahead of schedule, which meant I could relax a little tomorrow. Friday, which was the next day, was perfect. I could finish this assignment and spend a long weekend with my mom. The next morning, I got up and turned on the coffee maker before heading to the bathroom and standing under the shower for a long time. Less than two hours later, I put the finishing touches to my assignment and logged out. Looking at the clock on my computer screen, I saw that it was only 10 in the morning, so I decided that I had enough time to cook something for breakfast. As soon as I poured the scrambled eggs into the pan on the stove, I heard a faint knock on the door. I rushed to the front door. There was a woman standing on the porch, whom I lovingly called Mom. Her wide smile and twinkling brown eyes lit up her face. A scattering of freckles on the bridge of her small nose. Hello, son, she whispered to me. Before I could say anything, we both smelled fried eggs starting to burn on the stove. Oh shit, I forgot about that. I said when we let each other go. Don't worry, I'll take care of breakfast. You can take my things to my room, she said, already heading for the kitchen. I was amused by how quickly she went into mom mode when I dragged her big suitcase into the bedroom and put it on the bed. Thinking that maybe there were some things that needed to be hung up, I opened the suitcase. The smell of fried bacon hit my nostrils as soon as I got to the kitchen, making my stomach rumble with anticipation. I hadn't realized until now how hungry I was. When she heard me coming, she looked over her shoulder and said, 
I couldn't save the scrambled eggs, so I'm making you a real breakfast. Sit down. Everything will be ready soon. I sat at the small dining table with my chin in my hands and watched her in silence. Just as she was putting the food on two plates, I told her that I was thinking of hanging her clothes out of the suitcase. Without turning around, she asked, You didn't open my suitcase, did you? No. I lied. I thought you might want to do it yourself. But it wasn't hard for me to please you and help you with things. Yes. Thank you, of course. But besides, I can't let my son look at his old mother's clothes and underwear. Laughing mischievously, she said it. You're only 42, Mom, and you're far from old. I complimented her. Relaxing, she picked up the plates and carried them to the table. She had to bend down slightly to hand me my plate. It was when we were putting the wash dishes in the cupboard that my mother complained about how high the shelves were. It wasn't a problem for me because of my height. Going to the built-in cupboard for various utensils, I pulled out a three-step kitchen stool, opened it, and put it right in front of the counter by the cupboard. It was here when I moved in. I think the owners knew my mother was going to be short, I told her with a smug smile on my face. Laughing, I gave her a tour, making sure she knew there was a shower in the bathroom too. When I showed her the office, she noticed the sofa and said that it would be more comfortable for her, so I should take the bed. We got to her room, and I watched as she appreciated its scarcity. There was a double bed, a small chest of drawers, a bedside table with a lamp by the bed, and a cluttered closet. I don't think she was too impressed. What would you like to do today, Mom? Oh dear, if you don't mind, I'd like to stay at home. Maybe watch a show. Who wants to become a millionaire? It's been a hectic few days. I'm exhausted, she replied. Sounds good to me. I'm just glad you're here, hugging her before leaving. The furniture in my living room consisted of a large upholstered sofa with a coffee table in front of it and a flat screen TV. I am a man with simple tastes. It took about 20 minutes before mom came out and said she was going to take a hot bath. This suited me as it gave me time to get comfortable clothes out of the closet. I changed into an old t-shirt and baggy sweatpants, then settled comfortably on the couch. She had a comb in her hand, and when she got closer, she handed it to me. I want you to comb my hair like before, she asked. When I was younger, I used to brush her hair a lot. And now, before you think that I'm some kind of sissy, let me tell you that I had good reasons to fulfill this little request for her. Firstly, it made her happy and secondly, it made me happy too. She would sit on the floor in front of me, and I would sit on the couch and comb my hair. I did it to show her how much I love her. Of course, after I turned 18, my arguments became a little vague. I often found myself looking over her shoulder while brushing her hair. Taking the brush from her outstretched hand, I sat on the edge of the sofa and watched as she sank to the floor between my spread knees. Leaning back on the sofa, she pulled off the towel and put it aside. Carefully untangling the tangled hair, I began to run the brush through her hair, looking over her shoulder. At first, her arms were at her sides, but she must have been uncomfortable. We spent the rest of the day looking through everything we could find on cable. Around six in the evening, pizza was delivered to us, and I took out a bottle of wine that was in my mini bar. Soon after we ate, the romantic movie started. So... My being here will create problems in your personal life, she suddenly asked. No, mom, I laughed. At the moment, my personal life is far and few. I know what you mean, she murmured. What do you mean? I asked, turning to look into her eyes. Oh, I didn't think you could hear me, she replied. You and dad are fine, I insisted. Yes, we're fine. It's simple. Tell me, mom. I begged her. Oh, dear, it's not good for me to talk about this with my son. Turning around enough to face her, I took her hand and said, Since I'm your son, you can tell me everything. Her eyes were a little misty, and I could tell she was embarrassed, but I could also tell she wanted to get it off her chest. Do you remember your father had that little heart attack for years ago? There must have been concern in my eyes. Well, he's had a little trouble since then, with a man's strength, she murmured. Male power? I asked like an idiot. Exactly, she replied. You mean you and dad didn't have that? I persisted with the question. The doctor says it has something to do with blood flow. It's not enough to get to where it should be, or something like that. For years? Have you not made love in four years? I asked. It's none of your business, she replied sternly, but with a slight smile on her lips. I'm sorry, Mom. I don't think I could have gone that long without it, I said. Well, 
Yes, anything can happen, she replied. We finished the current movie, a bottle of wine, and watched a couple of comedy shows before mom said she was going to bed. I wished her a good night, but sat on the couch for a while before heading to my office to get some sleep. I lay there and wondered why I was having loving thoughts about my own mother. I've never really done this in the past, but now I wasn't so sure as I drifted towards dreamland. Right before I fell asleep, I thought I heard some kind of buzzing. Looking down and still trying to focus my eyes, I was surprised when I almost bumped into a stool that I had placed in front of the counter. My surprise turned into shock when I saw my mother on top of the stool. One of her feet was on the stool, the other on the counter, and she seemed to be trying to clean the topmost shelf in the closet. She held a sponge in one hand and wiped the shelf with it. In her other hand, she held the handle of a plastic jug of olive oil. Mom! I croaked, afraid that she would fall. What happened next took only a few seconds, but in my mind it all looked like it was in slow motion. Startled, Mom spun around, the jug of olive oil slipped from her fingers and landed on the edge of the counter. The plastic lid flew up from the jug and splashed right into my chest, along with half of the contents, and onto my mother. Mom lost her balance and fell right on top of me. And oh, she screamed, her eyes huge with surprise and such suddenness of what was happening. After that, we made love. Looking at her, I felt only deep shame. I'm so, so sorry, Mom. I sincerely apologized. She stood looking for me to herself for a few seconds before slapping me in the face. How could you? She said before running to the bathroom. I didn't know what to do. I could hear the shower running when I was doing the difficult task of cleaning all the oil. I looked up when she came out of the bathroom, but she still didn't look at me. She just went to her room and closed the door. It took about two hours to completely clean up the mess, but as soon as I was done, I turned on the coffee maker and headed to my own shower. Feeling clean again, I went to the kitchen, got a cup of coffee, and sat down on one of the two chairs in the dining room. Mom must have smelled the fresh coffee, because she came out of my bathrobe and poured herself a cup. I could see that her eyes were red from crying. Mom, I prayed. Not now. We'll talk later. I just need to think about it right now, she said, heading back to the bedroom. After another cup, I put on a hoodie and jeans and then went outside to think about myself a little. I thought it would be best to give her some space. I hope she understands that it was all an accident. The day was a little chilly, so I was almost alone, sitting in the gazebo and puffing on a cigarette. My mood was gloomy as I reflected on what had just happened between us. A few hours later, I still felt like the biggest shit in the world when I walked back into the house. My name, repeated over and over again, brought me out of a deep sleep filled with images of my mother and me making love. When I opened my eyes, I saw that she was sitting at the dining table and there were two plates of food on it. What time is it now? I asked. It's almost 7 p.m., she told me. I had slept all day and still felt drained. Mom, I want you to know how sorry I am. I began when I sat down. Shut up and eat. We can talk later. Dinner was held in silence. None of us talked. After we finished, I cleared the table and washed the dishes, and then returned to watching TV. Mom disappeared into her room. I thought she was going to stay there, but 20 minutes later she came out and sat on the other end of the couch. I'm sorry I slapped you, she finally said. I understand, Mom. I deserve it for what I did to you, I replied. Oh, honey, please look at me, she said softly. I could see her age clearly now. Small wrinkles appeared near her mouth and eyes, and there were a few gray strands in her hair. Although she was still a beautiful woman, what happened to you is all physiology, she began. In such circumstances, it would happen to any man. Yeah, yes, you did it, son. But now I realize that it wasn't entirely your fault, she whispered softly. How so? I asked, not quite sure what to say. I wasn't sure how this conversation would go but I decided to be honest and open with her. I remember all the times when you wanted to help me around the house, she chuckled, and how you climbed that tree too. What can I say, mom? I said, my face flushed with embarrassment, but I'm your mother. Besides, I'm too old a woman now. You're a bright woman, mom. Please believe me when I tell you that any man would want you, regardless of his age. Our eyes met while we were sitting. Oh my God, what are we doing? This is so wrong, she blurted out before jumping off the couch and running into the bedroom. Stunned, 
I just sat there. I couldn't believe that I had taken a step towards my own mother. Was I some kind of sick person, I wondered? A few minutes of thinking about this thought did not give me an answer. So I decided to go to bed and pray that tomorrow would be better. I was stretched out on the couch in the office for about 10 minutes or so when I heard the shower turn on. The shower didn't last long. I heard her leave, and then the sound of the bedroom, door, gently closing. I lay there for another 10 minutes before I decided to go and apologize. When I reached the bedroom door, I was about to knock when I heard a buzzing coming from her room. Putting my ear to the door, I barely heard her soft whisper. On Sunday morning, I found my mother sitting at the dining table in my bathrobe, clutching a cup of coffee. I made one for myself and sat down opposite her. She was just staring absently into her cup, but I could see that she was nervous. I knew I had to say something, but I didn't know what it was. We sat in silence for a while. Then she looked at me. My heart sank when I saw the sadness in her eyes and the worried expression on her face. When she spoke, I could hear the reluctance in her voice. I want to apologize for what happened yesterday. If I hadn't been sitting in that chair, she didn't finish. You have nothing to apologize for, Mom. I tried to reason, but it really ended the way it ended, and I'm so ashamed of it, she said, almost crying. Confused, I asked. What should you be ashamed of? The fact that I couldn't control myself, she replied, leaving me even more confused than before. I'm sorry, Mom. I don't understand what you're trying to say. I got up, poured us another cup, then sat down again and asked what she wanted to do today. She told me to look outside first. When I looked out of the kitchen window, I saw the rain pouring down. So much for a nice walk around the neighborhood. I told her, I said she could choose what we would do, and she suggested we just watch TV all day. None of us were hungry, so we took our coffee into the living room and settled comfortably on the couch. We watched the channels on demand and planned our viewing pleasure for the day. We put our empty cups on the coffee table and made ourselves comfortable. The first movie was a bit boring. Does your back hurt, Mom? I asked. A little bit. I think she might have been pulled yesterday, she replied, embarrassed. The worst thing happened again. We made love. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry that I let this happen. It was wrong, but that's all I could think about since yesterday, she whispered. Mom, I just want you to be happy, I told her. You did it, darling. It almost hurts me to be happy, she grinned. Give me a few minutes and then go to the bedroom, she told me as I watched her leave. Curiosity got the better of me in less than five minutes. I followed my mother to the open bedroom door and looked inside. I lay down next to her. After we woke up and took a shower together, we went and ate something. We were both hungry. Early the next morning, Dad called to find out how things were going. I only heard Mom's part of the conversation. It's all right, darling, but your son doesn't do much house cleaning, so I think I'll have to make a trip once or twice a month to get the house in order, she told Dad and smiled at me. It was difficult to get any work done over the next two weeks, but somehow I managed to meet the deadlines. I didn't sleep in the office anymore either. That day, when Mom went home, I took her things to the taxi car. When I get back, I can surprise you, she said mischievously before getting into the car and driving away, leaving me standing there wondering what she meant by that.